Johnny Dollar. Come on back, Johnny. What? I said come on back here is all. Well, why not? Only where and who's that? The where is here in Corpus Christi, and this is Jack Price. Jackson. Haven't you had enough of me lately? Sure, sure we have, but that's beside the point. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Well? Don't tell me you and Doug Johnstone have finally found that old Spanish treasure we were all looking for last week. No, thanks. And I thought we made it plain we've had our fill of that caper. But seriously, Johnny. Yeah? What happened to us out there on Padre Island kind of proves a point, doesn't it? That in this world of ours, you simply don't get something for nothing? Right. And sometimes when you try to, you may lose everything. Like young Jose Pineda lost his life. Yeah. Jackson, from here on, I'm perfectly willing to work for what I need and want. Now that we've got the lecture on philosophy over and done with... How'd you like to take on another case down here? Why not? As long as you're willing to pay the old expense account. Well, of course. Without questions or uh, checking it over too carefully. Oh, hold it, hold it. Plus, of course, a nice big fat extra fee. Uh, hello, hello, operator. Operator? Must be a wrong connection. The man I was talking to was that fine, generous self-sacrifice and do-it-for-nothing gentleman by the name of Johnny Dollar. Do-it-for-nothing? Okay, that do-nothing, gentlemen. That's more like it. Seriously, Johnny. Yes, seriously. Come on down here, will you? Right away. What's up? The makings of an international incident, maybe. Oh, you better call in the U.S. Marines. Be serious, will you? Well, who's kidding? I'm afraid one of my clients is mixed up in the narcotics racket. And you know what that could mean. That he's not long for this world. That's right. Unless you can straighten things out for him. Narcotics, hmm? Huh? Sounds like a big order. Don't kid yourself, Johnny. It is. And it could be kind of dangerous. Well? You know something, Jackson? Yeah? When somebody calls me in on a case that's supposed to be a lead pipe cinch, I always nearly get my head shot off, you know, like last week. Yeah? So maybe this one that looks kind of big and dangerous, well, who knows? Maybe this will turn out to be a lead pipe cinch. Well, don't bank on it. Oh, I won't. But why not give it a try? I'll grab a plane that'll get me down there first thing tomorrow morning. CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-Western Life Insurance Company Corpus Christi office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the wrong doctor matter. <laughs> Expense account item one, shortly after midnight, $132.21. That's for a taxi out to Bradley Field and a plane ticket to Corpus Christi, Texas. As promised, I arrived early in the morning. Too early for Jack Price's office to be open, and there was no sign of him around the airport. So item two is three bucks for a cab to the Robert Driscoll, where I grabbed some breakfast. That's item three, a dollar thirty. Then went up to my room, unpacked my bag, showered, shaved. All ah. right. Johnny Dollar. Jack Price, Johnny. I thought you might have signed in there at the hotel. Well, after all, Jackson, if you weren't up early enough to meet me at the airport. Oh, I've been up all right and down at the office. Now, this thing is even harder than I thought it would be. Oh? Yeah, you see, this client, uh, his name is Julio Vera. Sounds Mexican. He is. Now, go on. Julio worked the shrimp boats, you know, down the Mexican coast, mm -hmm. and they dumped their catch off here. Yeah, so? Well, one of them started hauling narcotics up here, heroin. Much easier than smuggling it across the border on land. Now, Julio happened to be on board, so the judge gave him three years in the clink. But now he's out again. And back in the dope racket? Not if he can help it, Johnny. I'm sure of it. Not if he can help it. Right. But I got a call from his girlfriend, Consuelo Diaz. Real nice little girl who used to work here in this office. Uh-huh. And according to her... Well, anyhow, I, I promised her I'd send for you. Because, Johnny, what's happened is this. I'm listening. But only wait. I, I try to explain it over the phone. That's right. You're only a few blocks away. Right. So come on over here at the office. I'll give you the whole story. Right. Okay. Now, let's see. I, uh... I'd better take along the old 38 lemon squeezer. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I put my hat somewhere. Ah, there we are. Ah, off to the races, Johnny. Yes? Room service. Room service? Yes, sir. Sorry, you must have made some mistakes. There's no mistakes in your dollar. 
Isn't the silencer on that thing just a bit corny in this day and age? Back up so I can come in and close the door. Well, sure, as long as you hold the gun and with that chambermaid coming down the hall. I sit inside. Never let it be said that Johnny Dollar isn't the perfect host. <laughs> Try and trick me, huh? You may be pretty big, too big uh, for you, senor. Uh, oh, my goodness. What's happened? What's happened here? Uh, my friend, he hurt himself. But I thought I heard a shot. No, no, he fell. He fell against the door. He hurt himself very bad. Oh, my goodness. See, see, uh, you go on downstairs. You get the doctor, eh? Oh, yes, I surely will. I'll get the doctor right away. Yes, see, pronto, pronto. And by the time the doctor, he arrived here, Senor Dollar, you will be very dead. <laughs> Up with seven up, your thirst is quickly chased. The curtain's going up, so bring your seven up, and we will watch Louise swing on the high trapeze. Oh, she knows how to chill you, she really loves to thrill you, but what she likes best when it's time to rest is sparkling seven up. What did you say? For the very best when it's time to rest, fresh up with seven up. I learned it a long time ago. When you're as outmatched as I was by this big Mexican gorilla, you play it smart if you want to stay alive. Which explains why I let that glancing blow of his send me to the floor with my knees pulled up against my belly. After the chambermaid left as he closed the door and leveled his gun at me. And by the time the doctor he arrived here, Senor Dollar, you will be very dead. I kicked out with all I had. <laughs> The gun flew out of his hand across the floor, but he left it lay there and turned on me. He was big and he was tough, but that kick in the stomach had slowed him down a little. I caught him with a hard left that staggered him, but only for a second. He came back at me with a chair and everything else he could pick up and swing to throw at me. I tried to get inside of those long, powerful arms to work on his midsection and maybe open him up for a blow to the chin, but he just hung on. I kill you, I kill you. He locked my arms to my side, and grabbing his hands behind my back with his powerful arms, he started to squeeze. I break you in two. And a terrible pressure against my ribs and against my spine. I wondered how long before my bones would... Hey, what's going on in there? Open up. He's killing him. Open up in there. Break down the doors. I break you. Open up. Oh. Here, I've got a key. A key? Well, give it to me. What's the matter with you? Here you are. That's too late. Looks like I got here too late. You mean he's dead? Oh, I knew it. I knew something was wrong here. And yeah, now, maybe... Let me see. Now. That's why I got you instead of the doctor. You being the house detective and all. I just... Now, wait a minute. It. Wait a minute. Where's the man who did this to him? He said it was a big fellow? Yeah. Look. I'm near behind the door. That's right, senor. Oh. Now, just take it easy, Johnny. The doctor says you've got to rest. Take it easy. Oh, hi, Jackson. Yeah. Oh, Jack. That's right. Mm. Another little sip of this brandy the doctor ordered. Yeah. <laughs> Lie still, you bum. Here, oh. take a slug of this. Oh, brother, what a reception committee you have in this town. According to the chambermaid, I... She smelled trouble and brought the house dick up here. Well, it looks like your reception committee must have been Hernandez. Hernandez? Diego Hernandez. Uh, when we had met you out there at the airport, I didn't dream that Hernandez might find out about your coming here. Uh, who is he, Jack? Well, you remember I mentioned Julio, Julio Alvera to you uh, over the phone? Oh, yeah, yeah, the one who's just out of the pen. Yeah. 
Hernandez was skipper of that shrimp boat. Mm -hmm. and he was the one who was running the heroin up here from somewhere in Mexico. As you know, that could mean from somewhere way to the south or from just barely across the border. Yeah, I know. But more important, Hernandez is the one who was never caught. He skipped across the border and disappeared. I see. But then uh, Consuelo, that's young Julio's girl, and Johnny, she's the one who convinced me that Julio is on the up and up, keeping his nose clean. Right, you got it all straight now, Johnny? Yeah, I, I think so. Go ahead. Okay. Well, she's the one who called me. She'd find out somehow that Diego Hernandez was here in town again. And that's when I called you in Hartford. And you didn't tell the police? Yeah, no, I should have. Well, sure you should have. Probably the Narcotics Bureau, too. Well, they all know it now, of course. You see, when you didn't come to the office and I came over here and found out what had happened to you... Uh, what about the girl, Consuelo? Well, she was afraid, and I don't blame her, that Hernandez had to come here to get young Julio. Why? Because it was his testimony in court three years ago that put the finger on Diego Hernandez and his drug racket. Oh, I see. But anyhow, early this morning, she called me again. Hernandez had been out there to see her to try and make her tell him where he could find Julio. And did she? No. In spite of Diego's claim that he only wanted Julio in on a business deal, which, of course, is exactly what she didn't do. What's the matter? Of course. What? She must have been the one who told Hernandez you were coming here. You, you know, in the hope uh, it would scare him off. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Consuelo, whatever your name is. Yeah. But the point is this, Johnny. And darn it, I, I forgot to tell the police. But they'll be coming here any minute now to talk with you about this attack. I, I'll tell them then. Tell them what, Jack? Consuelo had no way of warning young Julio. He's been out of town coming back this morning. He'll be stopping by to see Consuelo. But if Hernandez goes back there and finds him there... Heaven help him. Come on, Jackson. We got... Oh. Now, you stay in that bed, Johnny. Now, take it easy. What's the matter with you? We got to get to Julio and that girl before he does if we're not too late already. Well, Johnny, when the police come... Well, you... Will you stop wasting time and help me get into my clothes? But the police are on their way up here now. All right, right now. We'll, we'll leave them a note or something. That's well, like I said, Johnny, I haven't yet told them about Consuelo and Julio Jackson, and anything. over there at the desk. You write them a note while I finish dressing and don't waste any time about it. Consuelo's little house was way out at the edge of town, in a very sparsely populated area. I knew the minute that we pulled up in front of it that we'd got there too late. The front door was wide open. Inside was still the smell of cordite from that pistol with the silencer on it. Yeah, Diego Hernandez had got there first, all right, and done his job well. Too well. In the doorway lay the body of young Julio. Just one willing bullet must have killed him instantly. The little Consuelo, young, pretty, dark haired Consuelo, was still alive. And she tried to drag herself to the phone on a nearby table, but she just lay there gasping, barely out of reach of it. While Jackson called the police and a doctor, I carried her into the bedroom and I went to work with a couple of wet towels and a bottle of tequila that I found. No. Finally. No. No. It is no use, senor. Oh, now, sure it is, Consuelo. Sure it is. You, you, you're going to be all right. Uh, the, the doctor will be here in a couple of minutes, and he'll, he'll, he'll get that bullet out of your back. No. With my Julio gun, I... I do not want to leave now. Oh, Consuelo, come on now. Come on. now listen, listen to me. Listen. Tell me, what was it Hernandez, Consuelo? What, what was it Diego Hernandez who did this? See? Oh, I want my Julio to help him again. He, he wanted him to help him in the, in the heroin racket again. Doctor. 
Oh, Doctor. Darling, that's the worry. The doctor will be here. No. Where will we find Hernandez? I can't tell you. That's right, Consuelo. That's right. Tell me. Tell me. The doctor will ask us. Maybe it'll be Dr. Velasquez, but please, Consuelo, where will I find Hernandez? Where, Consuelo? I say it. Yes? Dr. Velasquez. Consuelo, I, I, I know, I, I know the doctor is on his way. You must tell me, where has Hernandez gone? Consuelo, try. Well, uh... <sighs> Consuelo. It's okay, Johnny. The cops and Dr. Parker are on their way. Parker? Yes, yeah, so we could... Oh. I is she... Yeah. Too bad. She was a pretty little thing. She sure was... Could she give you any lead on Diego Hernandez? No, I, uh, I'm afraid she didn't make very much sense, Jackson, before. Uh, wait a minute, maybe she did. What? Maybe she did. <laughs> I spent down at police headquarters working with a young Sergeant Ortiz, trying to locate a Dr. Velasquez there in Corpus Christi. There in any city on the Gulf Coast, anywhere in Texas even, we must have run up a phone bill of several hundred dollars, but it was no go. Si. Si, gracias. Muchas gracias. Uh, nothing again, Sergeant? Nothing, sir. Again. Mm. Well... Unless this map here is lying, we have covered every single town this side of the Mexican border. Look at it. I've circled them all. I know. But if he went to a Dr. Velasquez and the girl was sure of it... And of course, down in Mexico, a name like that is probably as... Wait a minute. What is it, Mr. Dollar? Of course she told us where he is. Here, right in front of our noses on this map. Look, Sergeant, don't you see it? Well, yes. Only about 50 miles below the border. And others here, other towns also named after people. Here you see. Here is one called General Bravo. Here's Dr. Gonzalez, Dr. Cross. Little town. The one we care about is this one, Sergeant. The town they call Dr. Velasquez. Yes. And of course, that's where he works his racket. Right there below the border in Dr. Velasquez. Okay, Sergeant. Yeah, well, Mr. Dollar, by the time the necessary contact can be made with the policia down there, by the time the necessary papers can be drawn up, and look, here it is such a small town on just a little side road, and in such a desert country. That's all the better. That means if I take things into my own hands, there'll be nobody around to interfere. You would go down there alone, without the authorization? After what Hernandez did? The attack on me, two murders, and heaven only knows how many people he's killed with this filthy heroin. Yeah, you are right. But he has had such a start on you in a fast car, even now he could be well across the border. All the better. It's down there in that wasteland that I'm just dying to meet him. And if I'm lucky, maybe I can get down there ahead of him. But how? Yeah, I'll be waiting for him at the town of Dr. Velasquez. But how can you? And the day, it is getting late, Mr. Dollar. Sergeant, uh, whatever I may do from here on out, uh, you know something... It's, uh, it's none of your business, hmm? uh, You are right. It's none of my business. Good. I know nothing. Good. If only I knew somebody around here with a light plane I could charter and no questions asked. I mean, if you should just happen to have a friend or, or a friend of a friend. Of course, you, you don't know what I'm thinking of. But... Oh, no, of course not. But, um, why don't we go out to my squad car and take a little ride, huh? It's a beautiful afternoon, huh? Let's go, Sergeant. That little single-engine plane was a beauty. Incidentally, item four on the expense account is $250 to that friend of a friend. It was getting late, though, and I opened the throttle wide, flying a rather erratic course in the hope I wouldn't be intercepted crossing the border. 
Luckily, I wasn't. Then, with only a highway map to guide me, and believe me, the sun was getting mighty low now, I finally found the place I was looking for. The so-called town of Dr. Velasquez wasn't even a crossroads. It was just a handful of ramshackle buildings out there in the middle of the desert, some 20 miles north of the nearest decent piece of highway. Along the rough dirt road leading to it was a bare space where, by wrestling the controls a bit, I managed to set down. Then I taxied carefully onto that road, blocking it off. Why? Because in the last rays of the sun, I'd seen a cloud of dust that said there was a car on the road heading my way. And on this, I hope so. If not, I'd simply have to stay there and wait for him. Or rather, stay nearby in a clump of mesquite. It was Hernandez, all right. And as the headlights picked up the plane, barring his way... Just hold everything, Hernandez. Ah. And don't reach for that gun. You. You again. That's right. Keep him up over your head. What are you doing out here? What's your guess? I will kill you, Senor Dollar. Like I meant to kill you before. Sorry. This time I have the gun on you. It will do you no good. Turn around. Keep those hands up in the air. I will kill you. Remember that. Aren't you getting a little tired of killing? This gun of yours will be a nice souvenir. Thanks. So, you have what you call the, uh, the advantage, eh? That's right. <laughs> but not for long. Well, we'll see about that. All right, put your hands down slowly. Put them behind your back. Uh, you are not afraid to let me lower the hands, eh? Do it, but slowly. Very well. But it gives me the chance, senor. The one chance. Yes, for what? Have you never heard of the gun in the sleeve? No, you don't. No, I... I kill you. I... Why don't I ever learn to frisk one of these punks before I let him lower his hands? Next time, I might not be so lucky. Well, after dark, when I finally got us back to Corpus Christi, and I had quite a time landing in the small private field from which I'd borrowed the plane, Sergeant Otis, of course, denied any knowledge of the whole thing, but I noticed the landing lights were on and waiting for me, and also, by pure coincidence, a young fellow from the narcotics squad just happened to be there to meet me, nor did he suggest that I might have picked up my prisoner anywhere but this side of the border. Just the same, Jackson, uh, maybe it wouldn't hurt to keep this report under wraps for a while. Expense account total, including board and room, the trip home, 532.40. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. If you ever suffer a touch of arthritis or rheumatism, and you've never tried mentholatum deep heating rub, you can't know how good its deep heating action can make you feel. If you massage it into painful areas, you feel its deep heating action. You know relief is on its way. Mentholatum deep heating rub is an extra strong combination of active ingredients for safe, temporary relief of minor arthritic rheumatic pain. Use greaseless, stainless mentholatum deep heating rub often. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, one murder, three suspects, and each of them with plenty of reason, plenty of opportunity. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Ralph Camargo as Diego, Bob Dryden as the sergeant, Jelly Sonnenberg as Consuelo, Lawson Zerby as the voice, Maurice Tarplin as Price, and Hilda Haynes as the maid. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Stuart Metz speaking. <laughs>